It's time for the Trading Stocks Made Easy podcast. Each week, Trading Stocks Made Easy demystifies stock trading and investing so you can profit big. And now, here's the host of Trading Stocks Made Easy, the wealthy investor, Tyrone Jackson. Hey, everybody, it's Tyrone Jackson, and welcome back to the new year, 2023, and the Trading Stocks Made Easy podcast. I'm so happy to have you here. And you're lucky to be here because today on today's show, I have one of my favorite students uh, from New York, and her name is Jocelyn. Now, right before we get to Jocelyn, who's had a fascinating journey and I think is, well, a little in love with the stock market the same way that I am, uh, I just want to say to you guys, it's the beginning of a new year. What you want to do in your trading and investing and your financial planning is like set some goals. If you listen to some of the shows last year, we talked a lot about having goals and having a vision for your financial life. And when you have a vision, you set the stage for your dreams to come true in financial terms. And that's what Jocelyn has actually done. And since you guys are constantly telling me you like hearing from the students, well, that's how we're going to kick off 2023. Welcome, Jocelyn. Jocelyn, and how are you? I'm doing great. So happy to be with you. Well, I'm happy to have you here because I consider you one of my star students, not only because of your success as a stock market trader, but your attitude. You're always so positive and open and willing to learn something new. Have you always been that way? Well, I think I, I'm pretty much a glass half full kind of person. Definitely look for what's possible versus what's wrong. Uh-huh. Um, since I was like 11 uh-huh. and I started participating in transformative work, like seminars and things like that. And uh-huh. my family has always been involved in that. So I think that's always kind of veered me towards the positive and the open. And it's so funny because you were a TV producer for what, 25 years? Is that right? Yeah, TV and film. I did, you know, maybe 500 commercials, a half a dozen feature films, a couple hundred TV shows, a lot of stuff. And then you were led to these transformative seminars, which you produced. And how many years did you spend doing that? Over 30 years designing and delivering transformative workshops. I love it. Love transformation. Wow. Still do it. I still coach people and and I coach for people in the world of transformation. And let me let me ask you about that. You know, when people desire change in their life, right? What are mm-hmm. some of the most common roadblocks that you see with people who say, I want my life to change? We all know the number one thing is fear, right? But if we move beyond fear, yeah. what are the other things that you've observed? I think, you know, limiting beliefs. And that's one of the things that I've gotten from working with you, honestly, is disappearing a lot of my limiting beliefs around money. And I didn't even think I had limiting beliefs, given how positive I am and how much possibility, you know, I was like, well, if anybody, you know, doesn't have limiting beliefs, it's me. But I discovered for myself out of working with you that I had all sorts of superstitions and beliefs that weren't real I mean, there were real beliefs, but they weren't true. And the minute I disappeared them, and this is the same kind of work that I do with people in all different areas of their life, right? Once you can see it as a belief and not the truth, it disappears as a limit. And then you're free to take action and fulfill on what matters to you. So everything I do with people in all areas of their life, I've gotten from working with you in the area of money. Wow. Well, that is mighty nice. One teacher helping another, huh? Exactly. Well, you know, listen, everybody needs a coach. I I have coaches in any place you want to have excellence, you better get a coach. Yeah, I happen to agree with that. That is really true. Now, you came from a family. I came from a family who had nothing right? So basically my mother and I, you came from a family that was really filled with a lot of creative and artistic people, correct? Definitely creative and artistic, not money. Until my father turned about 50, he really didn't make money. Um, But always creativity. You know, my family was definitely in the arts, in the entertainment business. You know, my father wanted to direct movies. He directed commercials. He had an advertising agency. My mother was a casting director. So definitely that whole world of TV, commercials, movies was my home. So here you are as an adult in this crazy thing called show business, and you're also producing these transformative seminars. And somewhere along the line, someone introduces you to the idea of trading in the stock market. Tell us about that. 
Well, it was during the pandemic, and one of my dearest friends, we were just doing weekly Zoom calls because nobody could see anybody in person, right? So we would talk on the phone, and and she started telling me about she was making this much money this month and this month. And I was like, how are you doing that? And she said, oh, trading. And right away, I was like, that's crazy. That's crazy because I had this inherited belief that the stock market was very confusing and complicated and you had to, you know, understand whatever. I don't even know what, it wasn't even like a real thing. It was more just like this cloud of danger when it came to the stock market, you know, 2008, Oh, you know, and she started to explain it to me and having weekly calls with me, tutoring me. So, you know, she was tutoring me on how to, you know, in, in how to do covered calls. And I went in and I put a little bit of money in. And within 10 minutes, I made like $1,500. And I said, this cannot be this easy. And she kept telling me, it is. This is what I'm doing. And I've done it for this many months. And this is how much I'm making. And I said, this is insane. So I kept putting a little bit more and a little bit more. And then I sold my apartment and I put all that money and I was just obsessed. Now this was like my new job was training and learning. And I joined your online, you know, trading school and started studying the videos. And I became just so excited about money and about how easy it was to make residual income. And I said, you know, if I could do this, I could retire earlier. I could, I mean, all these visions of things that I was waiting 10, 20 years to do became immediately available. Amazing. And I remember the, I can still remember the first day I met you at at one of our live events in New York. We call it a bring a friend. And you came in and you greeted me with such enthusiasm, right? Because most people- Yes, I remember at breakfast. Yes, I was at breakfast. I'm like, well, (laughs) I'm having breakfast. I'll see you when we get- when we get upstairs. Yes. <laughs> and, 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 you know, it's interesting because when I am, you know, presenting in front of people and it's brand new, it's clear that I'm liked, but a big issue that comes up is trust. Like, do I trust this guy? Mm-hmm. And do I trust this system? Did you have to, before you placed your first trade, did you have to do battle with the issue of trust? Well, I trusted my friend. So that was the biggest thing. And, you know, if, if she was telling me that, She was, I trusted her. So I did it out of my trust for my friend. You know, when I, when I first met you, I had been trading with her for about six months and it was, you know, then we were able to do the live events. So I think I came to one of your first back live out of the pandemic Mm -hmm. events. Um, And I had already developed a trust for you from, from the videos and from my relationship with my friend who had a relationship with you and, you know, had been studying with you. So I think that was the bridge. Mm -hmm. I, but I have been running into when I share with other people about this trust issues, um, you know, trusting that it's not a scam trust, you know, and, and a few of my friends are studying with me, my son, my new son-in-law every week I tutor him and he's, you know, working on it. And so I've got people that are in the game with me, but there are certain people who just, they're in the soup of that belief that, you know, the stock market is some elusive, complicated, only financial planners can do, you know, it's, it's a common story that I think they want us to believe because they want to collect their fees and they don't want us doing this. My financial advisor doesn't want me doing this. You know, I've had to fight her every step of the way and I love her and I trust her and she has a lot of my money, but I have a lot of my money too. And she would rather have it. I'm sure. Yes. Yes. And so so you 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 now are, uh, you know, really into trade. Could you ever imagine a month when you didn't place a trade? I sometimes can't imagine a day <laughs> when I don't place a trade. It's frightening. Like there are some days like I think it was yesterday. I was no, it was the day before yesterday. I, I said to my husband at the end of the day, I was like, oh, my God, I was so busy today. I didn't even log into my account. I don't even know what opportunities I missed, you know, because I know there's always something. Mm -hmm. Very rarely is there nothing that I can do, you know, and I have several accounts that I'm managing, whether it's my IRA and also my parents. We took out a a mortgage on their house. I took half the money to make the money to pay for the mortgage payment off that money in the market, which was working last year Mm -hmm. and almost all of this year. But now it's falling short a little bit, given the state of the market. Um, But still, you know, given how much the market is down, that account for my dad is doing really well comparatively, 
you know, because there's premiums coming in every month. And it's just, I love the math of it. Mm -hmm. I love the strategies. Mm -hmm. I love that there's always something to be made, even if it's a hundred dollars, that's a hundred dollars I didn't have before I spent three minutes doing something. That is correct. And all money is good money. All money is good money. (laughs) And it's so funny, Jocelyn, because I said to you right before we started uh, recording, you better be in class in two weeks. Because although we're in a, in a in a market that is down because we're waiting for the Fed to stop raising interest rates, et cetera, et cetera, what you're going to learn in two weeks is going to knock your socks off. And I have worked on this strategy, you know, over the, the, the holiday because I have a vested interest in making sure that everybody obviously does well. So I'm going to mention uh, a few topics and you t- you're going to tell me like, love, lukewarm. You ready? Okay, ready. Okay. Uh, everybody who listens to this show know that we're going to start off cover calls. How do you feel about cover calls? Love. Love. Why do you love cover calls so much? Because they're like tried and true. You know, it's guaranteed money. It's safe comparatively. It's kind of like, okay, as long as you keep your strike price above your cost basis, you're pretty fine. And even if you keep it in this market below your cost basis, if it's far enough above what it is now, you're, you're in okay shape. You can control it a little bit. Uh, 30 day cover calls versus 90 day cover calls. I prefer the 30 days. Mm -hmm. So, um, just because it's quicker, obviously. And I've done the 90 days when there's not, you know, not enough to be seen in 30 days. I'm not afraid of 90 days Mm because, you know, if I'm going to hold Apple, I'm going to hold Apple. Or if I'm holding HD, I'm going to hold HD, whether it's 30, 60 or 90. And getting that premium in to increase my buying power is always a good thing. It's a very good thing. Or pay down that margin, right? However you want to look at it. (laughs) Tell me about it. How do you feel, you know, over the past six months to a year, we've really been, or I've been really encouraging people to up their game, utilizing bear call spreads. Where are you with that? I've, I've been doing bear call spreads and I got sort of, I know it's not really getting caught in, but I got caught in um, a couple of big bear call, like, you know, 10 contract kind of bear call spreads. So now I'm sitting with a lot of a certain stock, which I'm not concerned about because I know ultimately it's fine. But, um, you know, I've now gotten a little bit shy about the bear call spreads because my buying power is about 50% of my, you know, I've got 50% of my margin being used now. So I'm sort of holding off on doing more of them and, you know, trying to get that down, get rid of some of those contracts, hopefully get called out at some point and then go back to them because I do like them and I do like the shorter term bear call spreads too. Mm-hmm. Do we get spoiled uh, with cover calls in bull markets? Because sometimes when I bring in other strategies, people are like, no, 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 no. Let's go back to the fast money trades. Do you think something happens when you start making fifteen, twenty, thirty thousand dollars a month consistently, and the market changes, and maybe you're down to five or six? That that shift or that decline in that uh, monthly or weekly profit does that hurt a trader's psyche? Do you think? I think it does. I mean, it didn't like crush me or anything, but I definitely saw a decline recently because I'm not trading as much because I ended up with you know, that those 20 or 30 contracts, mm-hmm. uh, but case, <laughs> I, um, you know, whatever the number shall be. Uh, the, the point being though, that I'm still making money. I mean, that's the thing. And I have to keep, con- you know, reminding myself, it's like, this is money I wasn't making. And if I have to use this money to not just pay down my margin, if I have to use this money to pay my rent or whatever, pay for my daughter's wedding. I did that last year. I paid for my daughter's wedding out of money I made from the market. Yes. So it's like, it's money that's like, it's not free money because there's risk involved in it, you know, and I've taken losses in terms of, you know, pay to leave and all that kind of stuff. But it's, it's a guaranteed source for money, no matter how much it is, whether you're making, you're going to tell me 3000 a month, 10,000 a month, 20,000 a month, any number a month, that's more than you're making exchanging time for dollars. Absolutely. And, and what I find it's, you know, I love the market as much as anybody else. Right. And I love explaining what's going on. Like, I think we, you were in a session not too long ago and I explained how pervasive bear call spreads were. Right. And I show you how the institutions are making millions and millions of dollars. And the thing that is sometimes shocking to me as the teacher is that sometimes 
People only want the market to be bullish, right? And they're not prepared psychologically for when the market changes. And like life, life changes, right? So when you get a change in your life that's unexpected, to me, it's about how you adapt to that change, right? Why do you think people have such a difficult time shifting to a neutral or, let's say, bearish market. I get that it's disappointing, Jocelyn, but do you have any other insight on that? Um, Well, I think it's like from a neuroscience perspective, people's brains are designed to predict the future from the past. Mm -hmm. So if they're used to that bull market, the bear market is like a disruption in your brain patterns. So it's like a muscle. If you were left-handed, and then all of a sudden you had to use your right hand, it's disconcerting, Okay. you know? And, it, and it's like your muscle memory is another way. So it's almost like on autopilot. So you have to be conscious and intervene in the default to be able to create a new pattern. And I love the bear call spread um, and also the whole leaps, like buying a leap and then selling a monthly front month call on that. I mean, I've been making money from that every month. You know, there are ways to make money with that. That was the other thing was the when we use the leaps, a long leaps option, and we sell calls against that, it's become very popular online. It's the poor man's covered call, but it's essentially just a spread. You like that trade. I love that trade. I, I think that's... A, like a no brainer. Yeah. Like there's no reason not to do that trade, especially if you pay for it and it becomes like a free thing because you buy that out of the way out of the money leap mm-hmm. and then sell something that pays for it. Then every month it's free money. Correct. And I show you how to get a 100% return on that yes, money. Exactly. And, and, and that's, that's, that strategy is such a big strategy. I only teach it when we go away. Now, we're coming up on commercial, but I want to get your thoughts on this. You went to Maui with us this year, which I thought yes. was even more magical. Yes, I cried at the end. That was the most, ex- yeah. most <laughs> shocking thing. What was it about Maui that you loved this year? Well, the camaraderie and you're in, you know, I mean, you're in a room full of people in all the live programs, but for that many days to be working with people that are up to the same thing you're up to, you know, it's, it's very empowering to be with like-minded people who are taking the same kind of risks that you are and up for upping their game in any area of life, Mm -hmm. whether it's fitness or your marriage and relationships or money. It's uh, it's very empowering to be with people and you'll discover more in a group of people like that than you will in a mixed kind of mindset group of people. And when I treat, teach these big money strategies, I have to do it when we're away, right? Like we have to be at a five star resort in order for me to really go through that spreads trade, right? When I teach you to get the way out of the money leaps option and just keep turning that every single month, because I have found that people their belief systems, if we're home, they, they simply won't believe that that is possible. But if you're out at a five-star resort and I say, now go to the beach and talk about it, people go, well, this must be real because we've disrupted the daily pattern. Have you found that? Did you find that to be true as well? I, I think it would be a better disruption mm-hmm. if we were at a five-star resort in Paris. <laughs> yes, you've been pushing but for yes, that. <laughs> I agree. I do. I think we should do it in Paris. I mean, Maui is so pedestrian. Uh-huh. Come on, Tyrone. Sure, sure. Let's reach here. Let's reach. And let's, I and I, and I promise. I promise you. The last time we were together, we'll we'll form an exploratory committee about where we can Deal. go other than other than Maui. So, so you are you are being heard. Hey, listen, today I'm talking to the Jocelyn from the New York City Wealthy <laughs> Investor Program, and we're going to have more with Jocelyn right after you take a listen to this. Want to increase your stock market trading profits? Then you need to start your monthly membership to WITradeSchool.com right now. Don't understand how to write covered calls for monthly income? No problem. Simply review Tyrone's latest stock trades in our video library as many times as you need. WITradeSchool.com is all about helping you get the financial education you need to earn money in the stock market and change your financial life. Tyrone Jackson, the wealthy investor, has helped his students earn thousands of dollars per month trading stocks online from home. These are people just like you. So what are you waiting for? Follow Tyrone Jackson's Red Hot Stock Trades and Investment Strategies today. Don't wait. Start your monthly membership at WITradeSchool.com right now. 
Welcome back to Trading Stocks Made Easy. We're talking to one of my favorite students, Jocelyn from New York, who's lobbying us. Where do you want to go? Beijing, you said? For the next? Paris. <laughs> Is it in Paris, not Beijing. <laughs> Paris, Beijing. Well, yeah. Sponsor on me, my friend. <laughs> <laughs> now, speaking of which, you know, you so wonderfully embrace this idea of thinking bigger and re monthly residual income from the stock market. You have a major change in your life. Now, your husband's also in the entertainment business, and you guys are moving to France in large part because of the money that you're generating in trading. Explain that. In a, well, in a huge part in terms of the shift in my mindset about money from working with you, mm -hmm. I was able to see like, okay, well, if I want to do, like we just came back from Paris with my family. We took my parents, my kids, you know, my daughter brought her husband and he brought his parents. And, and it was like, okay, well, how are we going to pay for this trip? I said, well, I'll trade and I'll make money. You know, I made, I made that money back in, you know, June mm -hmm. to pay for that trip. Mm -hmm. And then, um, you know, I started to look at, well, my dream, my whole life has been to live in Paris and we've kind of inched our way there. We go every year, we go a few times a year. Sometimes we spend a month there, which was a big step. And then I said, okay, well, what would it take to actually move there? And I started to look for apartments and I found an apartment that I really liked for rent. And I said, okay, well, this is money I make in a week in the in the market. Mm -hmm. I, I could make this, you know, I mean, I back was making it over a week. Now maybe it's two weeks, but whatever. It's like I can pull this from the market. And if I downsize in New York, because I still have two kids that live at home, you know, downsize, they don't have to live in the style that I've been accustomed to. Let them live in a, <laughs> like a lesser style. Mm -hmm. I could be paying the same amount I'm paying now for two apartments and be able to have what I wanted my whole life. So now my husband is going to take six months off, which is, you know, the biggest risk we could take is to cut our income in half. Right. Right. In half. Right. And he said, but, you know, we both looked at each other and we said, we can make the money back, but we can't make the time back. And that is what has been made available to me by being able to say, I'll make it in trades. I'll make it in the market. There is a strategy where I'll be able to make whatever that is from that. And, uh, you know, I could cry thinking about what's now opened up. There's nothing that's not possible. It's like, there's just got to be some strategy or I've got to move some, you know, money here or do a pay to leave here and then reinvest it in this. And then, nah, 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 nah. I mean, it's just all doable. Yes. You work the pieces of the puzzle and you trade in not only cash accounts, money you can pull out, but also in retirement accounts, correct? Yes, definitely. I have two retirement accounts that I'm, I'm running right now and we're hoping to get my husband's because if he leaves for six months, he can take his 401k and take control of it. So that's part of the strategy too. Yeah. And do you feel any pressure trading in a retirement account? Like this is all we have in the future and how are we going to make it? No, that's, I feel less pressure because it's like I got another, you know, 15 years before I'm even going to use it. Right. Right. So you, you have know, time. Like, to me, there's less risk. Yeah. Correct. Totally. You have time to wait for the market to come off its bottom and rise. And we're in a market that is going to retrace. I think it's going to happen within the next uh, 120 days. It is going to be monster, just a, a monster upswing. And it's going to happen so fast, most people won't be able to catch it. But I want to ask you this, though, um, because, again, because of your transformative background. If I asked you three shifts that someone would have to make internally, in order to be what we call a self-directed investor, where you're handling uh, your funds, what three things come to mind that have to change so that someone could essentially be you? I think trust is a big one. And it's not just, you know, trusting the strategies, but trusting yourself. Mm -hmm. Because when you're managing your money, it's a lot different than just looking at statements now and then and saying, oh, it's up or it's down. It's like, you know, every decision you make has an impact. Mm -hmm. You're directly connected to that. So trusting yourself, trusting the strategies. And I think the other thing that has to shift is, you know, from being negative to being open, which I know you say a lot, but I deal with it even with my husband, but who's totally trusted me to do all this. Mm -hmm. And he, you know, sometimes I'll say, yeah, well, we're going to, you know, pay to leave on this. So we'll take a loss of this. And he's like, ah, I don't like that loss. No, I don't like that. And I go, no, no, no. But it, 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 you don't understand. Then we're going to have that cash to be able to 
you know, make money in this. And he's like, no, I don't like the word loss. It, it, you know, so I have to deal with shifting his mindset mm-hmm. to be open. Mm-hmm. And I think that's the, the other shift is really being from being negative or scared mm-hmm. to being open and trusting. Do you think anyone could be a stock market trader or do you think it requires, you know, a kind of uh, adventurous spirit? I don't know, actually. That's a good question. You know, money is one of the things that messes with people more than anything. You know, like I, I work with people in the art of being unmessable with, which is how I coach people mm-hmm. to be unmessable with. And money's the, one of the number one things. Sleep, money, and sex are the three things that mess with people more than anything. Right. But money's huge. And I think that there are some people that aren't cut out for the kind of thinking. It does take thinking. I mean, you have to do math. I mean, you know, you have to actually, you know, look at scenarios and and play, do different, you know, math. It's a math problem. Yes. And if you're not willing to do that work, then it's probably not a good idea for you. You should just let somebody else do it. But they're not going to do my my financial advisor is not making me monthly residual income. Correct. So if somebody else is doing it for you, they're not doing this for you. They're doing something else for you. Correct. And they're getting paid and they're not generating monthly income. Okay, there's something wrong there. I mean, if we taught this to people in schools, Tyrone, mm-hmm. if we had a financial education that was available for kids mm-hmm. in high school, mm-hmm. I mean, if I knew what I know now from working with you, you know, 40 years ago when I was graduating high school, forget mm. it. Right. It'd be a different, you'd be in a different, a different place. Totally. Right. Oh, so I'd, I'd be hosting the retreat in Paris. You know? <laughs> 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 I was flying everybody there on my private jet. Right. Right. Well, you know, I say a lot of times, particularly in a live program, one of the reasons that we don't get a financial education in school is because America is obsessed with training the working class. And if we start educating everybody, there might not be enough worker bees at Home Depot and other places to do the work because we'd be enjoying the benefits of financial freedom. So, uh, you know, there's some answers there around that. And I also think about that in the self-development world, right? Um, Why why don't we have some sort of self-awareness in high school or college about our thinking and how we were conditioned? I agree with you completely. I was lucky to have participated at 11 Mm -hmm. in transformative work, but most people don't have that opportunity ever. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, when I would lead courses, most of the people were in their 20s, 30s, 40s, sometimes 50s. Mm. And going 55 years with limiting beliefs of who you are and what you're capable beloved, that's got to be torture. It is torture. It's torture for a lot of people. And I hear, you know, Tony Robbins once said, uh, if you want to see your income, you take the income of your five closest friends, divide it by five, and that'll be your income. We are so stuck in our comfort zones financially in this country. And this is one of the greatest countries in the world. And there are all of these escape hatches. And today you can look up anything on YouTube and there's someone willing to explain to you how to trade in the market, uh, how to build cabinetry, uh, how to put in software in your computer. And so this is an amazing era in that way. Hey, listen, I'm going to lose you in just a little bit. Let's talk about your transformational work at Be Unmessable With. Did I say yes, that correctly? Unmessablewith.com. Yes, you did. Okay. The unmessablewith.com. And that's, you know, what I coach people in is what I call the art of being unmessable with. So I coach successful people who experience themselves limited or stuck in an area or two of life. So I work with them to discover what messes with them, dismantle it, disappear it and free them up to fulfill their dreams now, not someday. And what do you get out of that work? They, people say teachers always teach what they need to learn most. What do you get out of helping people? It just is so satisfying to see somebody move past where they thought was the top, you know? Like they thought that was the most they could accomplish in their marriage or in their well-being or in their company, and then have them go far beyond that is one of the most satisfying things that, I think anybody can participate in to see somebody disappear a constraint. I mean, you do it all the time when people disappear a constraint around their relationship to money. Isn't it like 
heaven? It is amazing because I started this program because I really wanted people to experience the freedom that I experienced. And having been raised by a single mother where, you know, we believe there was nothing. And all of a sudden the whole world is open to you. That is amazing. What I wasn't prepared for is the amount of uh, admiration that people have, which is like, wow, it's like they fall in love with their coach. And it took me a while to really understand that. But, you know, I like to think in the work that I do and certainly in the work that you do, you know, the impact goes further than just that one person, right? So, for example, you're trading. You have kids. They're going to be traders. Well, at least the husband of my daughter is being a trader. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> but, 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 yeah, no, my kid said, you know, for Christmas, I don't want a present. I want a share of Microsoft. I was like, done. You right. Know? Well, I, I love your thinking. You're training your son-in-law to be rich. You know, there's some benefits to that, That's Jocelyn. right. Nah. Exactly. I'm like, you know, you take care of your mother-in-law, my friend. All right. Exactly. <laughs> hey, listen, you are such a joy to have around. And I re- I just want you to know, I really, really, really appreciate the enthusiasm that you bring to every class, even if the market is going down. You're like, what are we learning today? And uh, That's right. usually by the time we get to lunch, I'm like, is that good? And you're like, yeah, yeah, this is really interesting. So thank you for always being open and embracing the new. I really do appreciate that. Absolutely. Thank you for the opportunity to, you know, basically blow off the lid when it comes to what's possible with money. And I look forward to continuing to discover more and more and more. Yes. Now give us the name of that website for those people who really might want to work with you and transform their lives. Beunmessablewith.com. Beunmessablewith.com. That is Jocelyn. Thank you, Jocelyn, for being here. And I'll be back with some parting words. Hey, it's Tyrone Jackson, Wealthy Investor again, and I just wanted to remind you that if you enjoy listening to the Trading Stocks Made Easy podcast, be sure to share it with your friends all across social media, including Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. If you enjoy hearing about success principles that inspire you, as well as interviews with some of my most successful students, I want to remind you it's right here at the Trading Stocks Made Easy podcast, wherever you get your podcast. And oh, make sure you download as much free material as you want at thewealthyinvestor.net. I'll see you there. Hey, welcome back to Trading Stocks Made Easy. You know, Jocelyn is a wonderful example of a student who has a great spirit and willing to embrace things that she doesn't understand. And now she's being financially rewarded for it. I know sometimes uh, there are some of you who try stock trading and you buy some cheap stocks and it doesn't work out. And you sour on trading, you know, but sometimes success is a process, right? First of all, you know, here, I don't endorse cheap stocks. I really prefer that you stay within the Dow Jones Industrial Average and the S&P 500, because that's where the stability is in the companies that you're owning. But I want you to know that if you're listening right now, you still have a tremendous opportunity before you to change not only your life, but the lives of the people around you who you love, your kids, your grandkids, right? And as we, as Jocelyn mentioned in her uh, interview, her son-in-law, which I thought was really pretty cool. So I always like for you to embrace the idea of having financial freedom, not just for yourself, but also for the people that you love. Why? Well, simply stated, birds of a feather always flock together. Hey, I'll see you next week right here on Trading Stocks Made Easy. You've been listening to the Trading Stocks Made Easy podcast. Be sure to rate and review our show on iTunes. While you're on iTunes, be sure to click the subscribe button and you'll automatically receive our next episode. 